Hey guys, it's CC here. Just wanted to give you guys a very quick update on how things are progressing for us now that V4 has launched. We're obviously going through the motions of making sure that we've got everything right on our contracts um, before we deploy on V4. Um, there's a number of, and the term I'll use is interdependencies. So typically what happens um, when you're rolling out these contracts is when you're in an environment that has a lot of services already up and running, it's fairly straightforward. You, you basically roll out the contracts, everything works, and then you just get on with life. The challenge for us, and I think pretty much the challenge for all devs, all dev teams, and, and in particular the um, the devs over at Pulse Chain, is that whenever we we launch the new chain, there is a lot of things that have to happen to enable um, interaction or the interdependencies to actually work. Uh, so to give an example, um, one of the challenges that we have is within our contracts, we're using multi-sig, right? So some of our contracts have multi-sig um, as part of the contract. And so what does that mean? Is it means that we're using things like Gnosis Safe to enable us to create um, contracts and signatory contracts that enable the use of Gnosis when we deploy our contracts. Well, whilst that's all good and well, if Gnosis has an issue, or if there's a particular problem with something like Gnosis, we can't actually launch our contracts. And interesting, interestingly enough, we've been struggling with a, a couple of issues with Gnosis just in the last day, and the team were quite focused on getting to the outcome of well, what was causing the problem, um, because Gnosis was working perfectly on V3, and then all of a sudden it just seemed to stop working on V4. And Anyway, we got to the, the heart of it and, and pred predominantly what it was is some of the contracts that we were pulling down from um, Gnosis itself um, wasn't recognizing V4. So simple things like that can create distractions that mean that you can't deploy what you really want to deploy because you're trying to resolve these other issues. So needless to say, these are the sort of things that can crop up as you're going through this process of QA. So QA is very important for us and the, and the guys go through a significant number of tests. Uh, we have a number of people doing some additional testing for us. But as you go through it, you realize, oh, something's not quite right. This is broken. That's broken. And you're, you're then going into um, almost like an audit mode to try and figure out, well, what the hell has happened? What has changed? What do we need to rectify? And sometimes, you know, we need to engage with the, um, the devs over at Pulse Chain just to try and get some clarity on uh, why certain things may not be operating the way that we'd expect in the past. Um, the other thing that typically happens in this situation is that for every project that actually has data that it needs to present in any meaningful way, usually you're reliant on something called an archive node. Now, all the archive node is in very simple lay terms is it's just a history of all the data. So not every node keeps all of the information, but an archive node does. And the reason why you want to do that is you want to be able to aggregate that information so that you can present it on the DAP. And there's another service that you need to run. Typically, you need to have some sort of graphing tool, something like Subgraph, that enables you to aggregate data and then, then allow your front ends to connect to that aggregation. Um, and they're the sort of things that the team have to go through every time there's a new release of Pulse Chain. So the guys are working really hard and you know interacting with the Pulse Chain devs when required. Um, it's really good that that happens, but. I just wanted to explain to the community really that, look, these things, whilst they may say, seem simple, it's just a matter of relaunching, um, it's not always that straightforward. And sometimes these little things can trip you up. And, you know, something as simple as, hey, Gnosis wasn't recognizing V4, so hence we couldn't get the front ends to work. It was kind of a little bit annoying. We were able to use the, um, the command line stuff that was working well, but the front end wasn't. And the reason for that is that, that that particular script hadn't been updated. So again, they're the sort of things that can trip you up and, and you need to go through a quite a rigorous process to get to the right outcome. So on that basis, it's it can be a little bit frustrating, but it's just a, a process of elimination and then getting to an outcome and then obviously going through the regular testing to ensure that everything else is hanging together. Now, the other thing that is important for us, particularly for this next release, is to ensure that we can actually do a price feed from the Oracle service. Now, again, I, I can't reveal the name of it, that's coming soon, but the Oracle service is up and running. But again, it too relies on some multi-sig. So Gnosis is um, something that we depend on to ensure that we can actually create that. But we're able to call the prices quite easily from that. And, and perhaps I might do a separate sort of video just to discuss the mechanics of, of um, the Oracle service and how that works. Um, it's actually really heartening to see some of the more senior 
well, I call them the DevOps in our community, and, and you, you guys probably know who they are, but some of the more senior people that have some experience in the infrastructure side of things are actually eagerly testing uh, the reporter service for the Oracle. Um, I think that's going to be a very useful tool for a number of DeFi projects that may wish to launch on PulseChain. So we're, we're eager to actually communicate that with you guys. Um, just a few few little marketing things that we need to get through and just, you know, some explain the video content that we're creating to help the community understand how all that hangs together. Uh, once we've got that sorted, then we'll be able to, to share a little bit more. Uh, but please watch, watch out for that because that's going to be, I think, I actually think it's going to be quite a sleeper because th there is a real need for an Oracle service and um, DeFi projects that are considering using an Oracle uh, may want to look at the Oracle service that we're sort of rolling out. Um, obviously, we need it for liquid loans, and hence that's why we're delivering that. Uh, I always find it amusing when people say, oh, well, you guys are just copy-pasting and, you know, you're just taking this and it's so easy, you just fork it and then everything's okay. Well, yeah, everything's not okay. And usually the reason it's not okay is because there's all these other interdependencies that you need to have working. And if you don't have an Oracle service, well, guess what? Liquid Lines is not going to be able to call, call prices effectively uh, without that sort of, and, and particularly having a redundancy for the Oracle service is also another thing that we need to have in place. So they're the sort of things that, you know, can actually so, slow us down a little bit. And, and whilst we're prepared for all those things and we know about those things, just the little simple things that can happen when, you know, the Gnosis team hadn't updated their front end to enable or to recognize uh, V4. So hence that was a bit of an issue. Uh, we've managed to work around that. But again, they're the sort of little things that can crop up as you start to test on a new environment such as V4. Um, I think by and large, though, v fours it feels pretty good. Uh, it's getting pretty close. I think there were some things that we were waiting on on PulseX, um, one of which was uh, something I should share with you guys, is that when Liquid Loans launches, there will be an, an opportunity for people to provide liquidity. Uh, so there will be an LP rewards aspect that we'll be launching with Liquid Loans. Um, that'll probably run for about six weeks. Um, we, we haven't determined the final amount of weeks that we'll run that for. But effectively, we need to test that functionality, right? So in that process, we need to make sure that there is a liquidity pool that we can draw from and that we can actually um, engage with so that people wanting to participate as, as part of that LP rewards um, function will be able to do that and be able to test that once we roll out the next version. So lots to do, lots that we've been working on. The guys are working really hard to get all of those things right. Um, but rest assured that once we've done all the adequate testing, you guys will be the first guys to hear about it and we'll make sure that you have an opportunity of testing that for us. Um, hopefully that's given you a bit of a heads up in terms of where we're at in terms of our development. Um, please watch out for um, an, any further announcements in the future. Uh, I think Wallace is doing a fantastic job just keeping you up to date with what's happening. I think there will be some really interesting content coming from him soon. Um, but again, just, just be mindful of the fact that, hey, there's a lot happening. We're doing our best and we'll always try and keep you guys up to date with what's going on. So again, thanks very much and uh, I'll catch up with you soon.